That's called the I'm sitting perfectly straight. Do I look like I'm moving, Half Asian Lawyer? Oh, no, no, wow. no, not at all. <laughs> not half Asian <laughs> Lawyer Bill Richmond is here today, and he's very there sick. He is. I am. He is very sick. Yeah, he's, he's a trash can. But right you know off what camera. will make me happy what? is if you do the hawk neck challenge. Oh, is that where you can move your body but not your head? Yeah, yeah, you're failing. Total epic. Can you do fail. it? No. <laughs> Look at how fat my head is. <laughs> Please don't ask me. I can do it if my head fills the entire screen. Isn't it a you hawk, though? I thought it was a different bird that does the... Uh, I don't Chickens know. do it, I mean, too. An owl. All birds Multiple do it, I think. A fowl. Why? Even, even turtle doves Something do it. Something to do with flight. But I don't understand, like, why do they decide? In other words, you could just start them anywhere in space, right. but they decide that, oh, this the is head, where my head is supposed to be. Is. Like, why couldn't your head be down there? Yeah. Why don't you just readjust? They want it to be even. It doesn't make any sense. It's they can so recalibrate. It's so when they're flying, they can do this and turn yeah. without having their Steven head Crowder press. destroys right. birds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he already hates so the ground owl. And fly directly into yeah. the other cardinal that they see in the window. <laughs> Hashtag yes. avians too. There's a, there's a cardinal right outside of my window, outside of my garage. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time we're in there doing jujitsu, it just boom, boom, wow. hits the garage window. He wants to learn. And then when I pull the car in, <laughs> boom. And then I found out today he was actually dive bombing into oh my, my neighbor's car. Wow. wow. I don't know. And like the thing is, I kind of like him. I'm gonna miss Strange, him when he's yeah. gone. I, yeah. You know, he's a he's a vivacious little prick. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> got it. Red communist. All right. So we are going to have an Ash Wednesday. Are you uh, are you gonna smoke a pipe or anything? At all? Yeah, like, absolutely. It sounds like a horrible idea. <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> I came into the show and uh, he brought in one of those energy drinks. I was like, oh man, I'm I'm uh, I'm really dragging. Yeah. Can I have a sip? He's like, yeah, you can have. And then it was one fluid motion. He goes, yeah, you can have. Don't drink it. I'm actually really sick. <laughs> Wait, no. Second don't time. take it. Not good. You don't look sick. That's because I averagely look sick. No, no, no. You look, uh, you look like you have some color. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you don't That's look bright. pale. It's yellow. Thank you. Well, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> it's tough to It's not tell. any different. It's just a tinge of rose. Okay, so we'll get to an Ash Wednesday, but before that, we're going to be talking about the black sit. So... Question of the day, have you heard of the supposed black sit that's occurring with black Americans? They're, they're leaving the United States, moving back to Africa. It's mm -hmm. being advocated by a lot of black activists. Do you know anyone personally? And do you think blacks need to leave? Because, not me, this yep. is what they are advocating <laughs> over at Essence Magazine. Uh, I think we have, the, yeah, we have this article right here from Essence. There's this increasingly sort of common claim that black Americans, can we say blacks? Do we, what do we, is, is blacks uh, okay? Yeah. I feel like that's wrong. You're not supposed to say African blacks, Americans, but African American. Color. A lot of them are an African American. That's they don't true. like it. Some you read me the Riot Act when I said African American. Blacks. That's true. Coloreds. Uh, <laughs> no. They're fleeing the United <laughs> yeah, States to get away from racism. This is what they wrote about in Essence magazine, even saying that this is a viable solution right now. It's being suggested by black activists under the rule of Trump. So just to give you a feel, by the way, for the author of this article, it's kind of gone by viral and it's been echoed by places, I think like the New York Times um, mm -hmm. and maybe it was Huffington Post. Uh, Kristen Kirsten, Kristen Kirsten, they got a thing about that, Savali. I wanna make sure I get her name uh, right. She claims that in America, black Americans, we'll go with that. That sort of feathers it up. Black uh, Americans yeah. Yeah. took yeah. half from African American, half from blacks. Um, uh, black Americans that they're supposedly living in occupied territory and that the police are giving them, specifically under Trump, the right to kill them with impunity. That's part of the premise. Let's hear it from her. We talk about what's happened since Ferguson. You know, what's happened since then, she what's like happened since character. the inception of police departments. <laughs> that yeah, um, that the is a continuum of it. slave patrols Does who were meant earrings? to bring uh, enslaved black people <laughs> back to plantation, where the crime was not the dehumanizing institutional violence of slavery, it was actually people seeking freedom and they were meant to bring them back. So again, we're talking about occupied territories. We're talking about oppressed communities. We're talking about militarized police departments who have been given to write the kill with impunity. And it happens over and over and over again. Does your character have a hairnet? No. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Guess who? <laughs> <laughs> we, there we go. I raised yeah, it back yeah, up. Yeah. We all played Guess Who, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I really should get an it's actual prompter and then uh, apparently start using it. Oh, look what happened here. This whole thing just shut down. Thank you. Thank you. None of you can run prompter. Sorry. Think about so this. I'm using my hands. My hands my are doing Do you think that Sean Hannity has to do this? No. He reads exactly <laughs> what is written for him by somebody else. Yeah. True. yeah. Off screen. Okay. So Easy. that's uh, Kristen Savali. Let's take a look at some of these claims, though, that I think are pretty important. Uh, one of the claims. Okay. Uh, and you see this in the article, uh, not all from that clip, mm. but the Founding Fathers, they encoded dehumanization and <gasps> oppression into the Constitution to preserve their privilege. These are all direct quotes from Essence. I highly recommend that you go read them. Here's the truth. That's bull crap. Okay. The entire world employed slavery. By the way, not just African-Americans, okay? Yeah. But sorry about that. Sorry about that. Amtrak thanks you. 
The point is, <laughs> all of human civilization practiced slavery since the beginning of time to one degree or another. A lot of the world still does. We ended it. And something that this is that, that's something that's just shouted out a lot and so people accept it as true. The founding fathers were they were actually very troubled, deeply troubled by the idea yeah. of slavery. And they were already taking steps to try and pave the way to change the course of history and end slavery long before most other people were thinking about it, okay? So uh, the continuation of slavery was actually one of the primary gripes against King George uh, before we declared independence. I have a quote here from Thomas Jefferson. King George III, the third. lest you be confused, has waged cruel war against uh, human nature itself, violating its most sacred rights of life and liberty in the persons of a distant people who never offended him, captivating and carrying them into slavery in another hemisphere or to incur miserable death in their transportation thither. That's always a good word. Yes, uh, it is nice. I like determined that. to keep open a market where men should be bought and sold. He has prostituted his negative for suppressing every legislative attempt to prohibit or to restrain this extricable commerce. That is, he has opposed efforts to prohibit the slave trade. Pretty clear. Now, again, keep in mind, this is something that was not only legal, but it was enforced at this point. Right now, let's say that there's an unjust law you disagree with. Often you'll hear people say this to the right. They go, well, if you disagree with this taxation, right. why aren't you actually violent, or why aren't pro-life people being more violent with abortion clinics? Because that's not what we advocate. We believe in working within the law. We believe in respecting the rule of law, even as we try to change it through the system of law that we have. Mm -hmm. So let's keep that in context. Benjamin Franklin, he said, a disposition to abolish slavery prevails in North America that many of Pennsylvanians have set their slaves at liberty, and that even the Virginia Assembly have petitioned the king for permission to make a law for preventing the importation of more into that colony. This request, however, will probably not be granted as their former laws of that kind have always been repealed. Now let's go to some of the personal actions. Again, read the Essence magazine. It's predicated on the idea that our founding fathers were pro-slavery and wanted to continue it. George Washington. He made it so that his phrase could be sleeve, uh, his phrase, uh, his phrase, I had a stroke. Oh, yeah. His yeah. slaves <laughs> could be freed. I'm talking yeah. like her. <laughs> it's a continuum. It's a continuum. <laughs> um, he wanted his slaves to be freed uh, upon his death. It was, it was illegal, by the way, to do so while he was alive. Uh, Jefferson, by the way, he maintained a strong anti-slavery stance throughout his entire life. By his death, state laws had stiffened so much it was pretty much impossible for him to uh, free the slaves as Washington had. But Washington did that. Upon his death, he freed his slaves. Here's another claim you see from Essence Magazine and blacks it. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy? Think about this for a second. If yeah. I were to actually say with a straight face, blacks need to leave, that would be yeah, terrible. That would be, yeah. Yikes. But would be someone really bad. like her writing yeah. for Essence, Essence Magazine, where a far it's cry from Ebony and, and Ivory <laughs> is, she's going, blacks need to leave. Wow. And but putting down the guess who but, she, but she lives here. Yes, she does. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. she splits her time between here and Ghana. Oh, yeah. wow. She has a nice great. cottage in Ghana. Nice. Avoid the warlords. Um, a lot of miles yeah. there. Yeah, it's great. It is remarkable. They always talk about this too with Canada. Like, oh, blacks should move yeah. to Canada. Like, mm, okay, well, you pretty much have, it's pretty much the United States, only with worse health care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or back in the day when they talk about See slavery, like, we well, escaped to Canada. They would just say, hey, great, more slaves. Okay, get in line right here. Hope you enjoy <laughs> your shackles. As though the United States is the only place where slavery has existed. Another claim she makes, there is no corner in the United States where it's safe to be black. Here's the truth. Bullsh**. <laughs> it's not even close. <laughs> no place in the United States where it's safe to be black? Mm -hmm. Plano, Texas. Burlington, Vermont. Cedar Rapids. Take your pick, Miss Guess Who. <laughs> As a matter of fact, do you know where do you know where black do you know where black Americans are safer in general in the United States? Can you guys take a guess as to where black Americans mm. are safer in this country? No, no. where? <laughs> Tell us. What is it? What is Could it? it possibly? They're safer in white areas, oh. predominantly white areas than black areas, as they're far less likely to be the victim of crime through the hands of white Americans than fellow black Americans. I take no joy in that. That's a statistical reality. But I won't. I bet you won't. You're not going to hear that on the SPLC's latest hate crime email no. newsletter. Instead, no. they'll be talking about Proud Boys not getting into a bar fight with some guys and bandanas around their face. I find interesting that there's no there's no bit of irony to think about how we're going to change the system right. and say okay you know uh, didn't have a black president apparently have never had any right. uh, black Americans in any level of government um, kill with impunity I think that's the one that that should be considered the most offensive from a truth standpoint right. um, it, is the idea that if America has always been based on the idea of oppression and dehumanization is what you're saying you want to go to Venezuela. Or how about yeah, right. the Congo? Well, even worse than that, when you say kill with impunity, that implies that white people, and by the way, this is, a, is there any worse generalization you can make about an entire race of people, and let's include white people here, 
outside of they want to kill anything that looks different from them. Right. Yeah. So the, the insinuation that all white people are just aching to when no one's looking, kill black yeah. people gr- graphically, gruesomely for no reason. I mean, you really that is to assume that we have no humanity, that we have no empathy for our fellow men. It's just not the case. And by the way, to tie that to race is also inaccurate because many slaves were sold from African slave traders, as a matter of fact. 80 to 95% according to leftist sources. It's not even close. Yeah. The, yeah. The, ir- the irony of, of someone saying, I'm going to look at you based on your race and decide that you have so little love and compassion in your heart based solely on the color of your skin that you will create a, an oppressive nation and make no corner of that entire country yeah. safe is literally the personification of racism that yeah. she is allegedly trying to combat. What was the budget to get the breakfast at Tiffany's Mickey Rooney look alike here in the <laughs> studio? <laughs> <laughs> Far and so, wide. By the way, oh, if you wow. want to check me on check. this, uh, as to black Americans being safer in white areas, all the, Af- the aforementioned cities, okay, they're all safer for black Americans than predominantly black cities. You can look at the mm-hmm. list of safest cities in the country, by the way, for both white and black Americans, you can look at those stats. Then, if you wanted to find the least safe cities for black Americans, you would have to take that list, scroll down, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep the least safe, yep, that would be Detroit, in St. Louis. Yeah. And I don't know which w- I think Detroit is worse, but Definitely. you guys have it pretty bad. Yeah, St. Louis is it's uh it's This a- is the part where you argue for the check and you say no no no, St. Louis is worse, but Yeah, St. Louis is definitely <laughs> but not deep down worse. we all know. We all <laughs> know it's Detroit. Well, well, but but I will say like for example, historically there are parts of northern St. Louis or East St. Louis which is actually in Illinois. Yes, I got um, stranded outside of there. My Ford Taurus blew the transmission. Yeah. Wow, well, not good. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah, Tauruses are bad in that. Yeah, Tauruses yes. are really bad. Um, I, you know, the, the thing about Detroit, I've never been to Detroit, but I've done a lot of research and, t- and looked into it and, and frankly hear a lot of stories from your dad about it. Yes. Um, <laughs> Papa Crowder always talks about it. Um, but when you, when you think about it, I think some people will hear what we're talking about and draw a conclusion that, oh, it's a, it's a race issue as to why African Americans are safer in statistically in a white community. Right. Um, but it has actually nothing to do with race. It has to do with cultures that either cons- are concerned about lives or not concerned about lives. Right. That value value human lives or don't value human lives. And when you go to any city in America, whether it's Compton, whether it's some borough in New York, whether it's Detroit or whether it's St. Louis, and Detroit is definitely worse. Um, <laughs> it's not even close. You're, you're going to uh, find no people question. who just say, I don't value human life and by the way, Yeah, and a good point is, that's not a race thing, but I'll tell you what is uh, where you could attribute something here to race. You could attribute the voting block, and not black Americans because you look at the changes in the voting block under Donald Trump, but the activists, like this writer for Essence Magazine, and like the activists who've tried to speak for the black community to instate policies that have systematically destroyed them. The problem is a lot of these people are not really representative of black Americans. Go right. ask black Americans right now if you could pay for a free ticket for them to go to any country outside of the United States to live forevermore. No one would take it. So someone like this, let's be really, no, really clear here. She doesn't speak for most black Americans, nor do the BuzzFeed boldly lesbians. We need to be really clear <laughs> about this. I feel like black people in the media, unfortunately, are often represented by social justice warrior leftists. And not the true average black American voice who is probably the moderate base of the Democratic Party today. Yeah. Right, more to the center, more to the center than anyone would consider them, either based right. on values or religion, right. a deeply religious history. I mean, so much of what I've learned personally about Black History Month is the connection to religion that sustained yeah. families who were coming out of slavery. That's right. And yet thing. today, the main message you hear is, nope, definitely religion is for white people. Um, schooling is mm-hmm. for white people. Um, These are know, all the young ones. Yeah, all right, the right, young, right. like millennials and and. Younger. Well, there's, there's, there's. Right. What I would say is not, it's not all of them. It's the what you're seeing in the vocal minority right. when people like right. Pearson Savalia are saying, "Look at how bad this is. Look, let's right. all stand up and go." And I say, make it like the club, one in, one out. You want to go? All right, great. We're going to let someone else come into the country yeah. who is excited to be here, and they know that their skin color doesn't matter to their ability to be successful. Right, here. but it matters to Kristen Savali. Uh, yeah. Because how many Guess Who characters are going to fold down when you get to the point you're just winning, you're stacking the deck? <laughs> uh, so, yes, listen, even though you, let's be clear, you may run into the occasional, let's say, white racist farmer in Cedar Rapids. I don't know. I'm not familiar with Cedar Rapids. If there's one farmer who's like, I don't know. Listen, don't love me. And I don't know. Let's call it your neighbor. Um, But a black American is far safer, say in Burlington, Vermont, or Frisco, Texas, or Cedar Rapids than Chicago. It's not even close. And the good news is, black Americans, you can move to any of those places and you can still get BET. Yeah. What about the O Network? 
I, I am not entirely familiar with the O Network, but Oprah? I, yeah, I know who she is, everywhere. but I've never watched it. That Opa. being said, I'm sure there's a package available for that. Yeah. See, you, all the white people, they get to watch their Matlock, and you, black Americans, Christians, you can watch your, your Family Matters or your Mo Apostrophe Neek. Big Tech has something for everyone. By the way, <laughs> it's hit the, the urban notification package. bell if you're subscribed, because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot these days. Hit all notifications. Uh, and we also have the channel Crowder Bits up on YouTube, yeah, um, which is ironically, I think, monetized, and this channel is not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't make sense of it? Steven, don't even try to. Don't talk about Mug it. Club. We're funded by mugs, not a foreign caliphate. Here's another claim. <laughs> uh, the term Blacksit is used, and she uses this in her article in essence um, and talks about it. The term blacks that is used to describe black Americans leaving the country due to racism to live somewhere else. And this is important because this person is brought on to television programs mm -hmm. to talk about the blacks it. You know, and of course, it used to be everything used to be a gate yeah. because after Watergate. Mm -hmm. Now everything's Watergate, like sit Gamergate, after <laughs> Brexit yeah. was like Brexit, Blexit, yeah. Blacksit, mm -hmm. Bop it. <laughs> Flick that it. was a fun flick what, it, what about spin the, it, the, the yeah. bump it, the yeah. bump it, yeah. bump it. It's a hair mm. thing. Is that a hair thing? It goes under your hair. Is makes this... makes you have a bump in your hair. Oh yeah. What? Why, yeah. Would, why would you yeah, want a bump under your hair? I don't know. You're gonna have to ask. Like, Someone says that was like a five year old. I want the hematoma look. Country ladies. Yeah. Can I look like I just went four rounds with Buster Douglas and someone has to put cold <laughs> stainless steel compress here? I feel like that'll really work for me. This is a good look. It's gonna catch on. No, not <laughs> bump it. We were talking about. Bop it? Blacks it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, so many it's. That's the point. Black, black, black. Let's go back to gate. Black gate. No, oh, that's worse. Oh, Blacks yeah, it. Let's go Blacks it. No. Uh, no. That's a, was that the prison in uh, in uh, Where's Dark Knights? Yeah. Shut this show off. Black Dark Black gate. Uh, Arise, Blacks it with me. Okay. So this term is used, and what does that assume? It assumes that it's actually going on. A black right. sit, which is coined by activists. It's not. Statistically, there is no black sit. Funny story, actually. Funny you should ask, viewer, who I can't speak with, but I can spy <laughs> on your webcam because you don't have a sticky note or use ExpressVPN. Under President Donald Trump, <laughs> the single fastest growing group of illegal immigrants is... Oh, oh. Africans, mm. Look at that. Yeah. with a number of African wow. immigrants growing at a rate of almost 50% wow. from 2010 Ooh. to 2018, and Come a third bros. of those were just Obama's half-brothers. <laughs> oh, so much family. Those guys are good. A lot of family. That's a, that's he doesn't awesome. even know it's all big, that much. It's a big family. That's great. James of his father. Um, <laughs> paternity test from his father. So, b by the way, in this country, immediately following, this is important to note, the abolition of slavery, some free slaves were offered travel back to Africa, where there's a designated plot of yeah. land for the people who wanted to leave partially funded by Congress. <gasps> Most free slaves were, they were not thrilled with it. Yeah. They decided, no, you know what, you keep your one way. <laughs> you know what, I have heard of Blacksit, though. Really? Yeah, actually, I'm like, no joke, The actually, the article I read today about Blacksit mm. was about the number of African Americans who are deciding that they cannot be a part of the Democratic Party if yep. it's going to support yep. socialism. Yes, um, and and just saying this doesn't stand by our values. Our values are more aligned um, on the conservative side, or at least in the independent. The ninety-five-year-old Jewish curmudgeon who tips twelve percent doesn't do anything for them. Nothing. He doesn't have his finger Nothing. to the pulse of Black America. He doesn't. Someone tells him he needs to watch. Yeah. He needs to watch Precious. Oh, oh that's true. Yeah. that's it. He's just a little bit out of touch. We all have our blind spots. Okay, <laughs> another. Claim, yeah, that is true. Is that the Candace Owens Blacksit thing? And now they're trying to yeah. Blacksit, Blacksit. Oh, Blacksit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is Blacksit. As a Black sit, you yeah. just changed a letter. I know. Oh, now not saying black, not Blacksit, not that blacks were leaving are lazy. You, Savinali, <laughs> yeah. are lazy. Separate. You just changed you. one letter to get on CNN in a quadrant view. Come up with a new name. <laughs> All right. Here's another claim. This is from the article. According to the SPLC, you hear this a lot. Uh, the number of hate groups has risen. Truth. Bullshit. <laughs> Very much so. The SPLC includes churches, some of which I think are actually yep. at least half black churches and groups like the Proud Boys, which is a glorified drinking club. There aren't more actual hate groups. They've just broadened their definition. Second, mm. a review using the same methodology, okay, that we're talking about here, is these widely touted hate crime studies. Right. Here's a surprise. Here comes some cold water. It showed that Clinton's rallies were linked to an even greater rise in hate crime. So mm. either the methodology mm. is flawed or Hillary is 100% neo-Nazi. Oh, she just saw Dershowitz. She has like yeah. Gestapo look in her eyes. Someone get the Valium pen. Calm her ass down. I mean, it's just remarkable <laughs> to me. We're supposed to look at Hillary Clinton is Ed Furlong in American History X. <laughs> I don't believe that's the case. I don't think that Hillary Clinton having a rally where nobody shows up or Elizabeth Warren is equivalent to someone being curb stomped in a hate crime. But if we're right. using your standards, you're worse. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Here's another claim. <laughs> 
Uh, the article, right, it goes on to cite that uh, black Americans l uh, living in places like Ghana and Qatar, um, that they should be places where black Americans maybe should move to to achieve a higher standard of living and less discrimination. And they argue that some black people have moved to these countries. Black people, black people from the United States. This is the problem with this. This is this is the divide and conquer. I'm sorry, even in my own head, right? I'm not going to lie to you. I was a black, blacks, black African Americans. I keep correct. No, I'm just going to say blacks because you know my heart, and I don't really care. I can't say <laughs> African American. We're talking about a black American who went to Qatar. You black people, white people, that's an easier descriptor for this right now. You want to say that that's racist? Okay. Just like when I watch the UFC or boxing and they describe one guy in the red trunks and one guy in the black trunks. Well, how about you describe the guy in the black trunks as black and him as white? It's a white guy and a black guy fighting. Why do we have to act like we're going by the trunks? We're all going by the melanin. Doesn't mean we hate the white guy. Tyson Fury, I dig him. So, the truth. <laughs> And I don't not like Deontay Wilder because he's black. I actually Great like Deontay Wilder, period. Uh, the truth about all, it's complete bullcrap. The quality of life is far, far lower in places like Qatar, despite what Clockboy tells you. And they still have indentured servitude to this yeah. day. What happened yeah. to the slavery argument? <sighs> Under the Qatar, Qatar, they have these things called sponsorship laws, okay? Sponsors can, I want to make sure I get this right, cancel workers' residency permits, prevent them from changing employers, deny them permission to leave the country, and they can report them to the police if they do so. There are similar laws in uh, the UAE, other countries in the Whoa. Gulf states. Yikes. Are you it's, familiar? It's, it's very extensive. I mean, the, yes. the, I mean, this is decades long, and the growth of UAE and other Gulf states, I mean, the it, it especially affects, like, sub uh, subcontinental Asia, so like India, Pakistan, right. um, you know, and some of the Southeast Asian countries, where people come over being told the exact lies that Kristen Cavalia, whatever her name is, is saying, oh, it's going to yeah. be great, the, the standard of living is going to be excellent. And it's be like, yeah, if you're the person hiring the indentured serv right. servants. Their slave trade was much worse than the American slave trade. Like, yeah. the, the death rate was under 10%. Like, 10% lived. Oh, really? Yeah. You mean the survival rate was 10%? Yeah, the survival yeah, rate. I was going to say, gonna say that's actually rate was not like a bad death rate. Survival, it's a, that's a bad survival rate, though. <laughs> it's, yeah. very, it's, it's less than 90. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you so. flip the numbers. No, it's true, it's true, though. People don't understand this because they've just been saturated with the idea that the Americans created the slave trade. No, in these countries, there there is no Harriet Tubman because she's not even allowed to drive the choo-choo. <laughs> Also, there are no Jew Jews. Oh. <laughs> what? Ben's never been there? <laughs> I have, well, I don't know because he was sued by Clock Boy. If he was sued from uh, Qatar, uh, how right. funny would that be if Ben was, had to be extra That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to be sued by Clock Boy. They just snatch him up in like a uh, clandestine uh, mission. Uh, that's, a, that's another hoax that no one no one really reviewed, yeah, right? Yeah. Remember yeah. we remember Clock Boy? If you don't remember, it was all over the news. People were like, how dare this school kick him out? Turns out it was a total hoax. The kid put a Phillips alarm clock in yeah. an old sand. Samsonite. Well, now we don't revisit it. Okay, good for you. It's yeah. good that you guys, meaning the leftists, it's good that you control the media because you never have to, uh, you never have to pay for your mistakes. Um, by the way, women in prison in Qatar, uh, while we're not just talking about people of different races, women sentenced for being raped, sentenced to prison yeah. for being raped. Ooh. I want to make sure that I'm clear. This is not hyperbole at all. An actual quote, a court handed down a suspended one-year imprisonment sentence for engaging in extramarital sex and deported her. It also sentenced the man accused of raping her with 100 lashes for having extramarital sex and 40 lashes wow. for drinking alcohol. So she, and this is what's important, not just that she was punished for being raped. They acknowledged that she was raped because they, pun they, they punished the man for yeah. raping her. But he was punished less severely than the woman who was raped. And 40% of that same punishment was just because he drank alcohol. Right, exactly. Yeah. So if wow. you just like do Gosh. the, like, I don't know, transitive property, <laughs> raping is... You know, if you drink two bottles of alcohol right. in that nation, it's, much worse. it's the equivalent of rape. Listen, I just want to figure out my risk-reward ratio here. <laughs> if I rape her, I will be punished eh, about two shots of Jägermeister. Okay. Okay, that seems like a fair trade. Forty lashes? <laughs> All right. Okay, this is going to hurt. So... <laughs> Uh, something else, blacks it, that didn't get too dark, I don't really like it. This whole segment is dark. I hate that <laughs> we even have bit, to talk right. about this. I hate that I have to acknowledge someone who's a leftist activist claiming to speak for black Americans, telling black Americans they should leave this country because people like us want to harm black Americans without impunity. It is just mind-numbing to me. And you know what that does? Sad. That breeds more hate, uh, hatred with young black Americans. It's, if they see yeah, their yeah. people in charge saying that all the time, they're going to believe that people like us hate black Americans and want to harm them. We don't want that. We don't want to see that for anybody. Yeah. It, the, the exact point here is to create division, right? right. Her, exactly, her yeah. entire point is you should be scared of anyone who looks or you think looks white. 
right? right. Bill's sick today. He's a little more pale. All right, you're going to be afraid of him. <laughs> Most days, be he's totally fine. No big right. deal. You and John Henry, good buddies. But no, that's that's the problem is this. her entire mission is to be able to create division. Without that division, no one gets her on the news. Right. So anytime anyone puts her on there, they are literally saying, I want to make sure that this message of division based on false facts, is spread. Right. Now, it's a good point. And by the way, also, the proponent, speaking of, uh, of Asian, and I appreciate that you look whiter today because of your Thank violent you. illness, um, <laughs> they set examples of, of blacks living in, in Egypt, Vietnam. So let's go. Th- the average yearly income in a place like Vietnam is $2,300. For Ghana, it's $2,100. Egypt, you up it a little bit, $2,800. That's wow. annual income. So Ooh. let's get this straight. This author and proponents of the Blacksit movement and the people on the media who, who host them in their little, you know, three-sectional views, yeah, despite yeah. them being in the same studio. Did they ever tell <laughs> you that story? Squares. When I was, I was in, uh, uh, I, I don't know if I can say that. I think it was CNN. It might have been Fox News. This was years ago. Mm. And they put us in uh, different, like, quadrants, mm-hmm. you know, but we were in the same studio. Right, yeah. <laughs> and Jordan, I said, all right, and it was Doug Schoen. I said, all right, Doug, high five. And I reached into his quadrant. <laughs> <laughs> and I got, I got like, no. torn apart by the brass. Like, do not do that. Man. We have to keep the illusion alive that we're important. They need us. <laughs> They'll think they don't need us if they don't know that you're not in a quadrant from different locales. They thought you were in Iowa, man. <laughs> The lies. The whole house of cards comes crumbling down if you your hand goes in their quadrant. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Schoen, my God, he's one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> he's not quite Lonnie Davis, but he's right up there. So hold on a second. Let me get this straight. Was that a slight? A little bit. Yeah. Let's get this straight. <laughs> This author and these people are advising blacks to move to places not only where slavery is effectively still practiced, but where the yearly income is less than $3,000 a year. Right? While the median yearly income in the United States has increased more than $4,000 under Trump. It's increased more than the total salary, total income of people in these countries. And I, I get it, but if you go over there... Where are you going to buy your sweet kicks? Uh-huh. Where will she get those hoop earrings? And exactly. I have no idea. Hairnets. Exactly. I don't know. I assume I assume that there they can probably steal them from an indentured servant. Yeah, that's exactly it. Because they're Actually, not human. Yeah, that's, that's a life. By the way, that's humanizing. Those are shower curtain rings. A lot of people don't know. <laughs> She's resourceful. Oh, brilliant. Recycling. Yes. Oh, man. Good for the environment. So um, <laughs> I think you will see this narrative, by the way. We do have to get going uh, to the Ash Wednesday. Um, I think you'll see this narrative increasing as we go into the election. Especially, by the way, if, if Bloomberg is is still in the race, because the argument on race will, I think, it'll become even more heated if it's if it's Bloomberg. And if it's if it's Pete Buttigieg, expect more accusations. The argument will center around homophobia. Just like remember, everyone who voted against Obama was branded a racist, mm-hmm. and then that switched to sexist overnight when Hillary Clinton was running. Right, uh, if, yeah. if 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 the gay Alfred E. Newman lookalike secures the nomination, then they're going to play the gay card for Pete Buttigieg. But I think those are more sexism and homophobia. They're more. Like seasonal, mm. they're more seasonal, Opportun- right? Like pumpkin yeah. spice. Opportunistic. Right. The race card is always yeah. the ace up their sleeve. The, the race card is is like the star on the menu. Mm-hmm. That this is chef's recommendation <laughs> all yeah. the time. It's a constant. Yeah. Hey, so, I, I use mine all the time. Like anytime someone's like, "Oh, Bill should drive," I'm like, "Asian? Nope." Right. Not yeah. doing Unsafe. it. Exactly. And yeah. then for some reason, then sometimes you claim that you're a cholo. I am and definitely people, a cholo. Yeah. And, You've and, told me stories where people have confused heart. you, and you, you just didn't correct them. Why? Why not? It kept me safe. <laughs> I mean, why? Why would I why correct would you do it? That? I've watched him respond with, yeah, yeah, say. I'm like, why are you doing that? And he was actually just writing an essay, is what he yeah, was doing. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Technically he goes to night school still. So here's my preemptive question. Uh, let me ask you this. Genuine question. Where on earth, right now, today, in 2020, do blacks have it better than in the United States? Let me be clear. Is there some discrimination? Of course. To what degree? That's a conversation, and it's one that I think that we should have. That's where it's a productive conversation. Are there individual racists? Absolutely, Court of Black Garrett is proof. Um, slavery was awful, of course, right? God, I have to be really clear. You have to say this 20 times as a white person if you're even touching the so subject sorry, of yeah. race. What's your opinion on slavery? Slavery was terrible, was yeah. awful. Don't make me have to repeat myself so that someone cuts it out of context. You're my lawyer. You're going to have to be on my defense team. You don't want those kinds of hours. Slavery <laughs> was awful. <laughs> no, actually, yeah. Got it? After we abolished slavery in the United States, it was still awful. In the continent of Africa. And it's still awful to this day. Yeah. In most of in parts of Africa, it's worse. But in all of Africa, it's still worse than the United States. But see, all of these things, all of the above can be true. Black Americans can face different forms of discrimination and still be living in the best place in the world for someone of their skin color, period. 
Maybe that's my blind spot talking white privilege. Let's go to Ash Wednesday. That right there is the one expensive item I own. I was Lighter for my those. wife. It's a yeah. very, my wife got it. She got a great deal on it for our anniversary and she yeah. wanted to get me something special. And she always gets mad when I say my wife got a great deal on it for our anniversary. Just like yeah. I got her, oh, nice of you to join us there, uh, Gerald Day. Oh, Ger- Gerald. Hi, friend. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Because apparently <laughs> yeah. this time around Shoot. his pants would not suffice. He makes yeah. it for the Ash Wednesday. My I, love, wife I love how we're covering for the fact that we just didn't tell him the <laughs> episode started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, I also grew a beard. So, oh, yeah, nice. nice. Pre tape, some of it. Um, <laughs> and I'm getting My wife hates me telling the story that I got her wedding, I got her engagement ring on Craigslist. That's a great deal. I got a great deal. <laughs> and here, did I ever tell yeah. you the story? I think you did. I, I know bits and, and by pieces. the way, for Ash Wednesday, you guys can send in your videos. We take your yes, video questions yeah. at uh, lighthousecutter.com slash ask. That's right. Slash ask. You can send in your videos. So, what happened was I, was I decided I wanted to propose to my now wife, then girlfriend. Right. Follow and uh, <laughs> I went on. At this point, I didn't really know anything, so good I said, well, "Let me look on." Someone said, you should "Go check out uh, what it, the rings on Craigslist." I said, "That sounds good." Yeah. Uh, so I went and I checked it out, and there well, was a woman wrong. who that's said, a, "This is confirmed." Good. Has the uh, Zales like code? They put them underneath a little diamond. Yeah. You can look under, you know, this thing. Mm. It's yeah. not a microscope, but what is this thing? A loop. A loop. That's it. A jeweler's that loop. Sound, that doesn't really? sound scientific at all. Yeah, no. so a, a microscope. Loop. A telescope. What do you? I use a loop. Mm. Nah. What? Mm. Like off 121? It's a loop. She can. <laughs> what are you sending Muppets to Fantasy Island? So I can't help you. This is your language. What America? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Right. Uh, and in China, it would be like 19 syllables. Yes. Which, yeah. By the way, I have a question for you about Wen Chung tonight. Perfect. Uh, so <laughs> what happened is it says, okay, this is a legitimate ring, and it's a steep discount because I don't know right. if you know this, but like diamonds are they're, they're valueless effectively. It's just the way that it works, the way the industry works. So diamonds yeah. from last year are like nothing this year, which is weird to me because it doesn't seem seasonal. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's, a diamond. it's not like bell bottoms. It's a rock. Mm. Mm. Like, they say diamonds are forever, not like diamonds are for the spring yeah, that's, season. Yeah. For yeah. swimsuit season. So Nobody anyway, would see that James Bond movie. No, no, no not at all. <laughs> um, and, uh, though, you know, what do we know? I didn't think that Octopussy would ever be allowed on a poster. Right, yeah. That's, that's right out there. Great think point. about that. Good point. But don't worry. <laughs> think don't about worry. that. It's like, what's this? It's squid vagina. That is what uh, James Bond film. <laughs> that's there's nothing, uh, it's not even suggestive. Uh, yeah. Steven, you it. know an octopus is not a squid, right? I, well, okay. All right. <laughs> yes, no, and fine. a whale shark's not a whale. Well, that's that's <laughs> correct. <laughs> I'm glad you oh, learned that lesson finally. It's in, been years. In Hong Kong's not China. So <laughs> all squares are rectangles. That's <laughs> so true. It's so true. They're just short, even rectangles. So let me get to the story that my wife hates because we're in. A, we had a slight disagreement this morning, and I really just want to dig the knife in right now. So I want the whole world to. Uh, uh, so oh she boy. hates me telling the story that I had a great deal on her engagement. Sorry, Hillary. So I, I meet this lady, and I notice what's happening is she's faking like she's on the phone. Uh, because she's posting ads on Craigslist for these diamonds, so she's yeah. under the impression that I might rape her. What? And so she's oh, on the phone the talking like, "Yeah, sweetheart, I'll be home soon." And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, "No, no, no I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't want, I'm not gonna rape you. I just want the diamond." Uh, uh, and and then not, you know, and then I found out the diamond is a slang term oh. for ladies. And I was like, "No, the the, the rock." Oh. And then that's a slang term for drugs. Right. Yeah. This true. part is not. Re- I mean, that's it's true. But she. That's not. This wasn't what was most important. So I went into Zales and I said, "Hey, do you guys use your loop? And could you confirm?" And they said, "Yeah, we will confirm." Yeah, that's from last year's uh, diamond. And they were trying to sell me on this year's diamond collection. I think that's a lie. Yeah. I said, "No, thank you." So it was confirmed. I purchased it at like fifty percent off the purchase nice. price. Nice. And my wife thought it was the sweetest thing that she had ever received until I told her the story, and she was very pissed. It doesn't matter well, where you got the ring. Yeah, come on. Come on. You put a lot of thought into that. She just uh-huh. didn't like that I'm more enthusiastic about the discount than the engagement. <laughs> yes, no. she, okay. She, All right, she, so now we've gotten to the meat of Yeah, the she should be. You save that money to spend on her in other ways. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. You go. Or an old Ford Taurus. I'm going to tell you that. Uh, At argument. the time, I didn't have any money. Also okay. doesn't work. What, I t- saved the money for you, honey. We can. She's like, no, fine, cash right now. Yeah, Boom, exactly. bring me. Give yeah. me the discount. Because <laughs> apparently my wife's a Hold hooker. <laughs> what, what am I picking her wow, up off the, off the 405 like Eddie Murphy? Wait, hold on. You're what? saying your wife doesn't demand cash from you? 
I told I told mine that you come from a weird. <laughs> the wet markets are the least of your worries. It is a bizarre culture. They sell wives too. Do they? Yeah, they oh. do. That's true. Mail order. Who knew? Yeah, and you know what? They they respect the man of the household. I they, will say they that. Should, yeah. I did know a guy who actually did get a Filipino uh, mail order bride, and he was like ninety something. And I tell what? you what, they loved each other until the day he died, which wow. you know it was very. It was a brief window. Three weeks but later, they, yeah. But she was really sweet. Mm. So then she married a ticket girl. to a mayor. She yeah. did. She got it, but she stayed with him. Uh, what does Wang, everybody Wang Chun tonight mean? By the way, I wanted to ask you that. You I'm only half Asian. The, okay. I only know you said he's Chinese. The Wang part. No, no, no. The yeah. only words I know in Chinese are "Hurry up! You're in trouble! You're fat! Get over here!" Because those are the things that were yelled at me. <laughs> when your I was mom a kid. yelled at yeah. you. Yeah. My yeah. mom, my grandma, my aunts. But I mean, that's everybody. Okay, yeah. I felt loved. What about how taste piano key? Because <laughs> <laughs> she jammed piano key. Bamboo. Right? No, no, no. Those go in the ears. They go in the ears. Oh, you don't taste that. You sound fat. White people, <laughs> terrible children, discipline. And I'm not gonna spin. I'm not gonna spring for cochlear implant. Mm. <laughs> That's just oh, rude. It's a double whammy: your cruelty and your frugality. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So louderwithcrowder.com/slash/ask. Oh. We have some video questions today yes, for Ash yeah. Wednesday, and uh, also, do we have a pairing? By we have way? a pairing. Oh, a pairing yeah, of the week. Pairing. Let me see it the pairing a of the Perdomo. week. Perdomo. And some Buffalo Trace. They didn't even send a picture. No picture. I don't believe them. I think they're a teetotaler who lies, and (laughs) they want us to believe that they're a man, but they're not. Okay, let's go to the first video uh, from the fans and start off Ash Wednesday. Hey, guys, over at uh, Louder with Crowder. How are you guys doing? I've been watching you guys a little bit. It's been fun. Hope you guys like the Bruins set over here in New Hampshire. Um, I just want to say I appreciate you guys um, doing that segment with Rhett and Link. Um, And my, my thing I had said, um, kind of walking throughout life with a, with a kid who um, is struggling with his faith and um, brought up a lot of the same things that they're bringing up. And I've listened to their thing too, because that's a big thing with the high schoolers. I, I lead a high school ministry right now in my town. And that's a lot of things that are coming up right now with like faith deconstruction and stuff like that. So I really appreciate you guys diving into that tonight. Um, love listening to you guys, man. I'm just praying for you guys. It's been uh, it's pretty tough right now, so uh, um, hope you guys are staying safe. Um, if you guys have any advice and um, you know what, uh, maybe are some good books to kind of go to during this time, um, especially for high schoolers. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. But stay safe. Be good. See you soon. Well, I, I really appreciate the, uh, I don't think we got a name, but I really appreciate the video um, yeah. as far as uh, which books to go to, uh, how to edit. Yeah. It's a good book. <laughs> well, and, and I think you made a thread at the end. See you soon. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I yeah. mean, really. Oh, no, no, no. That was a very nice video. But I do, I do find it odd when I hope you like the Boston Bruins hat. Huh? Why? Yeah. <laughs> First off, why would we like it? And why would you hope? Yeah. Like, isn't there other, like you could hope for other things. A lot of other things. Yeah. You know, that you don't get the, 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 the COVID. The thing. You know, the, you can hope for two yeah. things at the same time. Yeah, but why would you no, waste yeah. a hope on hope you like the Boston Bruins hat? And they're like, because I'm from New Hampshire. Wait, wait, first off, what? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not um, sure what the connection is. But I do appreciate, uh, as far yeah. as books go, I, I assume that he means like books on apologetics. That's sure. really more Gerald and Audio Wade's territory. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And I actually, you know, you you taught me a lot about that when we had to do the, yeah. the whole sort of a talk Islam rebuttal. Oh, yeah. Um, which, by yeah. the way, I appreciate you going into bat for me uh, nice. against the Pakistani government. No for problem. people who don't know, follow me go. on Twitter. I had a formal <laughs> complaint and request of removal to Twitter from not someone in Pakistan. But Pakistan, <laughs> all of Pakistan got together thing. and <laughs> wants to kill Stephen. Doesn't like and I didn't even need to open the tweet in question that was no. reported the violation. Sure. I'm, like, I'm pretty sure it's the painting mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be. Let me narrow oh, it. Wait, yes, spoiler alert. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, you have if, books. If, I, I do. So um, you know, in line with a lot of this, you know, this quote unquote deconstruction thing, it, it frustrates me. I understand I the movement, language. but yeah, yeah. It, I do too. And so that I guess is where I'm going. People right now are bringing up a lot of arguments. He's not like, a heathen ass. He's deconstructing. <laughs> that is a, a better way of saying it. I Synonym. Guess. Mm, Merriam-Webster says hellbound. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Didn't know that. Is that um, one word? Or? So <laughs> it's two words. I think it's hyphen. Um, We're so, a little loose with the hyphenation. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think one of the one of the best books that I've come across that really helps you understand um, the Christian faith from a non-Christian perspective is, and this is out there, and everybody talks about it. C.S. Lewis um, wrote a book. Yeah, Mere Christianity. It's yeah. fantastic. So it's a, it's a great place to start for a lot of people who don't want to read 
a Christianese type of book, right? Yeah. Something that's just you know big on the language. I was going to say um, that, but I figured you had you guys had something like that. I figured that would be sort well, of the vanilla where you well, get like mere Christianity. <laughs> well, but Stephen's you, saying he thought you had, would have a better answer. I do have. No, a no, no, I, th I think that's a great this answer, is, but I know beginning. it's a very common answer. Yeah, this is the beginning. What of the would answer. you say their audio way? Yeah, I, I'd also recommend another C.S. Lewis book called Miracles. I really, really enjoyed that one. That's more of a philosophical bent kind of thing. Not to be uh, confused with that sh John Travolta film. Yeah, no, yeah, that please was bad. don't confuse the two. Oh, no, wait, was that Miracle or is that? Wait, what am I? Miracle. Thinking? Kurt Russell. Was that miracle? Is that what you're no, I'm thinking of Phenomenon. You, yeah, I was phenomenon, say yes. phenomenon. There was Phenomenon yeah. and then Michael. Uh, Michael. Uh, the, yeah, oh yeah. Both very one. similar very covers. Bad. Both wait, terrible. You mean yeah. Powder. No. Yeah, right. But they're also a similar cover. Yeah, it's that same thing. It's it's someone in a field yeah, yeah, with yeah. that Looking font, up. and you're like, oh, we're supposed yeah. to be impressed. Huh. We're not. <laughs> not yeah. really. no. Nor was no. the Swedish Swedish masseuse. Yeah. Yeah. No. And okay. another, another really great book, it's uh, actually a debate book between Christopher Hitchens and a guy named Doug Wilson, and they wrote articles back and forth. It's called, Is Christianity Good for the World? Oh, yeah. 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 Very short mm -hmm. little book, but uh, really, really highlights a lot of really important points. Yeah. yeah. So, that's uh, a good one. Another I, one would be God in the Dock. Okay. So that, oh, that's my, so I gave you the basic answer first, right. and this is a little bit more, and it's same kind of Don't spend too much time on it. This isn't uh, Oprah's so, book club. Yeah. Done. <laughs> summary. <laughs> well, no, I was going to say, give me a summary. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's articles back and forth, essentially, uh. for a debate club. Like, you would bring up a question, and then later, uh, the, I think it was the next week, the other person would have a chance to rebut, right? So yeah. they gave you time to actually go. It's not like a Johnny on the spot thing. Like, you have to know the answer right now to rebut right. this. It's what's actual truth out there. What can we go find and Yeah, and, I th and I think those books are really good. And I would say, uh, often watching debates on, uh, yeah. you can watch them on YouTube. Yeah. That's one thing that you didn't really have access to for a long time. When you think right. about, like, mm -hmm. co college professors yeah. either lecturing or debating. And you can watch yeah, that. Yeah. And something that I've done quite a bit, um, as far as if you're talking about obviously a knowledge base, a biblical knowledge base in theology, you need to read a book. But if you're talking about sort of, uh, I guess, uh, putting that in an environment or making it appropriate, you know, having appropriate information at the ready for a debate, um, that's where watching debates live. Yeah. Uh, and what I'll often do is watch debates live, try and find the person who I think is probably the best on the opposing side of uh, opposing point of view, yeah. and I'll pause it. So what I'll do is I'll have them answer like it's real time, pause it, and then answer as though it's in real time. Right. And my wife Helpful. knows that I'll do that before whether we do a change of mind or have a debate here on, on the, an actual debate on the show um, right. where I'll just be in my office for, uh, because listen, I'm not a very skilled debater at all. I kind of fell ass backwards into this. I'm not someone like a, a, a Ben Shapiro or a Thomas Sowell. Um, but that is a really useful tool. And you yeah, just say, is, yeah. I am not going to allow myself to stammer. I'm not going to allow myself to uh, buy any, you just act as though you are in front of of that lecture hall, yeah, yeah. pause it, answer in real time, and yeah. it kind of get that muscle flex. Yeah. I'd say one other thing <clears throat> is a lot of folks are familiar Ching -ta -ta. with. Yes, oh. <laughs> that's, that's what I was about. Why are you stepping on my joke? <laughs> now the Chinese audience knows <laughs> the punchline. <laughs> But for the Americans, what yeah, I was going to say. Wade likes the racism a little bit. <laughs> I know. So much. We bond over it. Please. What can I say? I, uh, I used to hate audio Wade. I was like, I hate audio. I hate Wade's. I hate, you know, it's a terrible combination. <laughs> I, I hate it. everything about you. I yes. get it. Um, All is, the syllables. Is to actually go back, because there's a lot of folks who will say, oh, you know, I read Mere Christianity, and maybe they read it in, you know, he's leading a high school ministry, which is excellent. Right. But some folks may have read this or read parts of it or read it in a time where they weren't ready for the message. And right, I do yeah. find that going back to reading some of these books, if you've read any of the ones that were suggested, um, you should go back and try it again and read it again because I think you will have a different perspective. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's, that's even at the idea. very least, even if you're someone's like, oh, I don't want to read a new book, just go back and revisit the old one. So yeah. it'd be a good opportunity. I um, and I saw I saw that, uh, Joe, listen, I'm going to say, but I will say, hey, by the way, uh, my cigar today is the Rocky Patel Mad Sun Grown Maduro was rated, I think, number Ooh. two in Cigar Aficionado's uh, cigar. Uh, uh, was it 2017, 2018? But the point is, you know, it's not my favorite cigar. That remains <laughs> uh, a mystery. <laughs> I've never gotten more Come requests on. than on social media for people saying, can you please tell me about the cigar? I've no. literally said one thing I want to keep for me. <laughs> I tell you everything else, the best coffee, the best fire, everything. I just listen. I might as well just give away my favorite things for free, yeah. but it's a limited run of cigars. <laughs> and I know the second, it's secret. that's how se we're a victim of our own success. We <laughs> Advertise things they sell out. Rocky Patel Sun Grown Maduro. It's good, but, but no. it's not that good. Ah. Your point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a broader point. There, when you're leading a ministry like this, like these are not new arguments that are that people are coming up with. The Red Link, those guys, they're not coming up with new things yeah. uh, that they're, are, they're talking about. Like you can get caught flat-footed sometimes, and like, well, have you ever heard about the Egyptian like Horus or something like this? Like this all existed before, right? Yeah. You, you need to go out and watch somebody who is, and I know I sounded a little like Alex Jones there on accident. So <laughs> well, <laughs> not sure what's going on. Go <laughs> I don't want to let the cat out of the bag here, yeah, and there's a good chance. And I won't be here tomorrow if uh, the right people uh, or wrong people see this broadcast. <laughs> They're trying to control you 
through the tail of Horus, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is the mind control chemical agents do not function if you purchase colloidal silver also effective against coronavirus. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> exactly. So I think go out and watch somebody who is making the arguments. There's plenty of people out there, the atheists that are making these arguments um, about, you know, that the Bible isn't accurate, it can't be trusted, and all of these different things. Don't just read up on Christianity uh, Today's website or something like that. Somebody who's out there saying, oh, no, it's totally fine. Go read what people are saying to these people so that you can understand the arguments that you're going to face, right? right. It's kind of like when you prep for uh, a change my mind. You, you go through all of the best arguments that somebody can make, and you're like, well, what do I think about these things? It's a little you different, know? and I will say the change my mind approach, and you know, I know we should write the book and, and get this out, and people have been kind of asking for it, and I, I want to get it out to you right now. Just, you know, help. if you join up at Mug Club, it allows us to do all of these things right. and give them away at uh, effectively uh, up the price of cost. But um, change my mind is a good approach because it's a Socratic method where people often say, oh, the debate. Well, no, we, we've actually debated uh, plenty of people on the show, yeah. and we have calls out to professors. As a matter of fact, the last change in my mind we did, we, we were called out by a professor. We said, well, let's do a debate, and then you know they don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, but change my mind is not a debate. It really is, ironically, about <coughs> trying to change somebody else's mind and allowing them to approach you and change your mind. So it right, sets it up yeah. in a non-confrontational manner, especially with issues of faith. I think that's a good way to handle it. Yeah, like a conversation. There are two things that I, you know, in kind of doing research, like when we do a meat segment, uh, you know, my brilliant researcher, Reg, who's just so much smarter than I could ever hope to be, and I'm, I'm thank Christ he's on our side. Um, <laughs> and I mean that. I literally sometimes yeah. go, yeah. Jesus, yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you for Reg. Thank you. But he doesn't hate me. Yeah. <laughs> because he could destroy Be very everything careful. that I hold dear. <laughs> um, so not using the Lord's name in vain. I actually say that prayer. Literally. It's the Crowder prayer. <laughs> and um, we kind of do, when we do research for a meat segment, we go, okay, what's the fastest route to victory here? What is the need right. to know? That's very, very different from trying to convince someone as to why your point of view might be valid. Right. That's a long, uh, a long ball approach. It takes mm. kind of guiding them down the path, time, getting yeah. them to question their points of view yeah. first. And I think, with, especially with faith, because at a certain point, as bold as some Christians out there want to be, there's always an element of faith. Not everything can be answered, and so you have to be prepared for that, and you have to create some kind of a connection before you go into some kind of information that you think is a trump card. And anyone who tells you it's easy or it's simple mm -hmm. uh, has never done it in real life, because it is not easy or simple, and you can be caught flat-footed, especially yeah, if you, yeah. like, that's what happens with Trump in debates. They, they prepare, you know, Ted Cruz, I guarantee you, was prepared for all curveballs. Yeah. He said, your dad killed JFK. What, what? the fuck, yeah. what happened? You can't prepare for <laughs> You can't prepare for And look yeah. at Curly Fiorita's face. Scoreboard. Um, <laughs> all right, let's go out. We have another one. Yeah, Lottocutter.com slash ask. Hey, Stephen. This is uh, a fan here. Um, I want to ask you a quick question. I'm currently on my toilet, as I should be. Um, so I just I asked this girl prom, and she said yes, thankfully. Um, but I don't want to do it next. Um, I don't know if I should talk to her via text. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to pursue a relationship with her at all. Um, yeah, that's kind of all what I have to say. So thank you for all you do. See you later. Touch her tip. See what she does. <clears throat> no, that's bad do advice. Do, that. do not do that. Do not follow well, Stephen Crowder's. Uh, I'm advice. I'm out of answers. So uh, half well, Asian Bill. Yeah. Now, unless he was referring to the the eastern tit, a uh, very nice little yellow bird. That yeah. you can touch oh, that. Oh yes, that's true. But no, otherwise, oh, yeah, um, why were you on this? I have so many questions about the question. There's a lot. The of, there are a lot of yeah, presumptions. He's like, I'm in this bathroom as I should be, why? Uh, along with my Boston Bruins cap. <laughs> <laughs> that would have completed. Did the, you crap uh, in your yeah. Bruins cap? How funny would it be if he was just wearing a New Jersey Devils cap and his toilet was one big Boston Bruins? Oh, that would be great. That would be a connection. Yeah. Wait, so, so he asked a, a, a young lady to prom that she he said does yes. not want to pursue anything with, which is fine, whatever. If you're going to treat it that way, you're going to treat it that way. But why would you, if, you, if you're going to do that, why would you continue to What's what's the question, man? Just yeah. take her to prom. Oh, and he's don't gay. Take her to prom. It's a beard. It's got to be a beard. Uh, that a was beard. where I was going to go. Oh. With this. I will say, I had a girlfriend in high school um, who was she was a sweet girl. She did nothing wrong. Uh, she was very pretty, out of my league. And what happened was I just wasn't over my other girlfriend. I dated a girl for like five years, and we broke yeah. up for a period of about a year. And so um, 
I asked her out, and then I realized that uh, I still had a thing with, I still had feelings for my ex-girlfriend, and I just avoided her. Oh, mm-hmm. no. Oh. For like a month and a half, and I still feel bad about it because she did nothing wrong, and yeah. I wanted to, I didn't want to be unfair to her and build up a really intimate relationship and then cut it off, and so I just tried, and right. I should have just broken up with her. So maybe he's coming uh, at it from that angle where sure. he didn't really want to go to prom yeah. with her, but maybe he felt that she was lonely, um, and he's gracing her with that punum. Yeah. <laughs> so she should be so grateful. Right, exactly. Well, yeah. here's the thing, right you know, the kind of silver lining, uh, proms aren't happening this year, so I guess you're true. off the hook, That's Chief. true, so. yeah. Oh, wait, was this a setup? Yeah. Maybe well, who, that's what who he Cough on her door handle and call yeah, it a day. <laughs> who sent in a question about asking someone to a prom that's not happening? Hmm. I think he's a liar. I think, I think there's a, a lot plant. going on here. He I don't think that was a toilet. I think that was a glorified bidet. Mm. A bidet. A bidet mm. is in a toilet. All right, someone else talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what, do we have I'm any so other confused. questions? Yeah, we yeah, have, we have plenty of other questions. I just didn't know. I guess we ran out of runway on that one pretty quickly. There's no problem. You saw the question. What do you if that was a runway, that was an Eastern African, completely deserted, <laughs> yeah. bomb-shelled runway of a question. But, but it's got to be African. Could be in the Eastern. Yunnan province. Haven't you seen Lord of War? Come on. But I if have. that's the question, maybe it's Wait, like... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold that thought, hold that thought. <laughs> the guy whose favorite film is Constantine <laughs> just referenced the sh- Nicholas Cage film. No, no, no. no that's not, not the shittiest Nicholas Cage film. You should be swishing. No, hold yeah. on. That is a sh- movie, yes. but that is not the sh- yeah, that is not, not Nicolas that Cage Nicolas Cage movie. is done. He has done some Are you? bad ones. My God, that's middle of the road for him. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It is. It really <laughs> but for your, in your best picks, it's upper echelon. Yeah, that's Oh, true. yeah, it's top five. <laughs> it's not Warlord. Oh, yeah, right. So this guy, I'm, I'm, I'll just try to assume that he's asking a reasonable question, which is, hmm. I, asked a girl, Look, I, asked a girl to, I asked a girl to prom. Don't you love how Wade, audio Wade is like the friendliest, most polite guy? <laughs> but he, he delivers the biggest gut punches of anyone. <laughs> I, know, so, I know. He I just know. assumes everyone's an idiot. Yeah, I yeah. like you guys. All right. So <laughs> the, um, yeah, so I'm assuming that he means I asked a girl to prom. Yeah. Prom's canceled. I guess he left that out. Oh, And then stuck. now what do I do? Because... I feel like I have initiated something with her, but I don't want to continue anything. I so he, maybe that's what it is. Uh, he, did you just raise your hand? I did because this <laughs> grown ass awesome man over. just oh! raised his hand. <laughs> All right, he needs to learn how to communicate better. If that is the actual right. question that no, he okay. had for us, he needs to spell it out a little uh, yeah, bit better. Agreed. That's the first step. Your, your <laughs> communication skills in a relationship are going to be really important. Yeah. Just listen, six feel feet like away. Just say, I can't, I can't talk to you anymore. I don't want to get COVID. Does yeah. anyone get the feeling that Gerald identifies with the girl in this question? <laughs> He's like, well, just, just tell me. Just yeah. tell me what you want to I do. Don't. I don't at all. He watched Never Been Kissed and was like, <sighs> so true. It's me. <laughs> he looked at the poster, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah I cried at the poster. And I don't mean uh, Mr. Arquette. Oh, uh, yes. Was no. it, what's his uh, name? Will Arquette? What's well, his name? David? David Arquette. David, David. That's Will. right. Uh, that Patricia David. Arquette Patricia. is the other one. Yeah. 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 And well, it's our time for equal pay. Which one's the one? That was Patricia Arquette, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Take your 77 cents and shut up. It's true. <laughs> Do it. Count okay, yourself so lucky. If we assume this guy's asking a reasonable question, sure, yeah. then, then yeah. my thought is... He, and he doesn't want to pursue anything, he should just not text her. There's no problem. Yeah, That's the worst advice. advice. Is well, she no, texting what? her? What is the first answer say? here yeah. was the right one. <laughs> what, what? What's the answer? You Touch your teeth and see what happens. That's see what, what he said. Oh, yeah. oh, Let the cards go. Oh, happens. Where they make? Let the cops be called when they They make. can't see each other. They're not going to prom. How is he going to do that? Logistics, Steven. <laughs> Gerald, did you say teat? I did. Oh my god! And I, I, I don't. What was the, what was the correct either. word, Gerald? I want to hear you say it. What was the original word? Um, breast. That's not the word at all. No. Mm. Teton. I really appreciate I the look of one. disappointment that you have, <laughs> like a father who caught his fourteen-year-old child <laughs> scrambling porn from the dish. What? The cable dish, satellite. Dish. scrambling. Okay. Kids don't understand this nowadays. They have it all yeah, yeah, accessible, yeah. and it's disgusting. Yeah, it's, uh, this all is just right. bad. I just all think, no. I think you're, I think this is one of those deals where really just be straightforward yeah, and honest. just let her like, hey, uh, sorry, prom's off. Thanks. Have a nice life. Yeah. That's it. You know. And then yeah. she says like, oh, then it's her problem. Am I cute? Say no. And then just go on your merry way. That's a good. That's actually a good point. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. tell her that. Just, just no. tell her. Just tell her. Listen. <laughs> I, uh, Disregard all the other just things you said. Dude. I only date tens. <laughs> hey. Hey. Even better. Just send her a link to this video. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Time stamp. Steven said. Like, it's right. To oh my, Now I feel bad about everything we've done. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> She's watching no, this. No. Hey. Hey. Oh, hey. I mean, if you're watching this you know. young lady. 
you could do better. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there uh, we go. That's come on. You yeah. saw the video question. He was you in, could in do a better. bathroom. The toilet man. <laughs> and he didn't <laughs> even have any hockey uh, uh, what's paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he could have been a nice guy. No hockey yes. accoutrement. Uh, accoutrement. Uh, All right. Let's go to the next question here. Because, man, these are... Uh, these are not questions that really give us a lot to mind. No. <laughs> not top tier. <laughs> Next one. So long. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to get all, all your opinions, except Gerald A's, uh, but I, I really want Hat A's and all your Bill Richmond's. What are some of your favorite classic action movies? And also, I have something pretty cool to show you, so check this out. Okay, before we go to anything, hold on. Do you see this? See, smoking is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, listen up. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Uh, it was a faithful, a faithful recreation listen, of the drama. Listen, he's doing his best. Uh, I appreciate prick, it. I, will I, have I know he wants he, he'll be cool half Asian bills. It's probably Lord of War. But um, <laughs> my favorite, like as far as bad action film, because I think most action films are terrible and people sure. deceive themselves into thinking that they are good. Yeah. Cobra is what it is. It, it is it's the, the ultimate bad. terrible film because there's a little hint of self-awareness, but yeah, not enough to know. make the bad uh, not a level worth appreciating. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so now, have Asian, but you are a, a connoisseur <laughs> of bad <laughs> films. So, so contextually, actually, there were only um, growing up. I only watched one action movie, and I watched it over thirty times because it was the only video that we had on tape at my house that was an action movie and I was of grounded course. the rest of the time. Yeah. Couldn't watch TV, we never we didn't have cable. Sure. And, you know, obviously there was no YouTube at that time, uh, or whatever else you could use to steal movies. So I watched <laughs> Speed over thirty hey, times. Is that no, an action movie? That's because you man, saw a portion of yourself in Keanu. I did. <laughs> and you tried and, to make and a portion Sandra of Bullock too, in both you. of them. <laughs> right. No, so I mean so, so I, I really so it's unfortunately like I have not seen a lot of what people consider to be the classic yeah. action movies. Like I didn't see Top Gun until I was in college. Right. Um what? And so yeah. And I hmm. yeah. at that point like I was still like ah, I get why people like it, but I don't personally like it. No. Right. Um so speed. Okay. Speed, not bad. Yeah. Yeah, speed. Uh, I like you thought you Cobra had... is right up there uh, for Ooh, me as far Cobra. as action films. Uh, I, I think as far as the best kind of action film that's actually would be Terminator 2. It's I don't know how mm. James Cameron Terminator did something Terminator. right. That's the only time that I can think of. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, I am including the Alien films. Comment below. I don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> Your, uh, I was told not to answer by this. Oh, that's prick. true. Uh, mm. But nonetheless, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> hey, obviously we don't have any respect for the people that ask the question. Yeah, we <laughs> love you. You know we love you. We got to give you a hard time. Feel like you're on the show. No, I I love Terminator 2. That's the very, very, very best. Very but good. like as the bad ones that are kind of funny, like Tango and Cash was like badly bad. funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then mm. uh, I actually like Predator a lot. Yes, yes. Thank the original you. I was Predator. Predator. Actually, was the, the most Thank recent you. Predator was the best in the series. <laughs> what? Which, uh, what? With the or with the Peel? Is that? I can't remember. They're two separate black. I know they are, but they, the names. I don't know Gosh. which is which. I really don't. Is it Keegan? Mr. Hollow Notes? And I know yeah. they're not black, but Keegan Michael was a Key. portion. Uh, yeah, which Sick one? Which Keegan Roy? Michael Key. Keegan Michael Key. Keegan I thought it was actually Key. very okay. good. The yeah. motorcycle. I thought it was reading Predator because it didn't take itself seriously and was kind of a wink and a laugh at the Predator yeah. franchise. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, audio yeah. wait, I don't think you've seen many. Well, as, as far as like classic <laughs> action, action stuff, I really like the old uh, Mission Impossible TV show. Oh. I really enjoy that one. Oh, really? Oh, you must have. Do we need to replay? Play that 19 minute question he did video. Say he yeah. said films. Films, uh, yes. Films. Well, yeah, <laughs> fine. <laughs> I don't have well, you got uh, me there, Stephen. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing. Once you get Wade off of his off of his sort yeah. of pre-written through line of crapping on everybody, he's not so quick on his feet. Oh, well, you don't have, what well, action like, films do you like? I like I like old westerns. Okay. Uh, so like, but those aren't really action films. I don't really. Yeah, westerns. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So yeah. so like an, an old John Wayne movie, like uh, you know yeah. Rio Bravo, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't count as an action. I like movie, the shoot. Well, fine. Of the know. John Wayne films, I like the Shootist. Shootist. The Shootist is great. Uh, the Shootist is a, is a good not really an action film, but I feel it's it really sort of it's it's sort of like the Heath Ledger scenario with John Wayne films. He was riddled with cancer. He was dying right. in mm -hmm. real life, and he was dying in the film. Yeah, and uh, just it just kind of captured everything at that moment oh, in wow. time really well. So I, hmm. I do like that film. Whereas I think yeah. the, the, a lot of people remember 
John Wayne films as better than they were. Some of them are good, mm-hmm. but a lot of them were crap. I agree. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. But some of them are great. The What's, best ones, I mean, Searchers and stuff like that is, is that's yeah, a great, Searchers great. is a great one. I yeah. Great. Searchers, I, yeah, I think it's always among, uh, usually when you look at top westerns, I think it's usually Searchers or Unforgiven or Interchangeable. Sure. And yeah. I do mm-hmm. prefer Unforgiven, but Searchers is great. Yeah. 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 Same writer. I'm going to do one. Um, Predator. Yeah. yeah. Die Hard. Yeah. Aliens. Die Hard's awesome. Those are my three. Aliens? Aliens, awesome. Aliens is a sequel? The second one. PD. That's the more the action one. one. The was first better. one was more of like a thriller horror movie. The second one was an action movie. Yeah. I'll give you that. You know what, what bothers me about action films? Um, and Nothing. people always get mad about this. Is no, I think they really sometimes uh, take men for granted and just assume that men are dumber than they are. Mm-hmm. Now, we all like some, some action films. Uh, obviously, all of us here have action films that we like. But for some reason, they just... They put, just like crappy rom-coms where they're like, ah, women will like this no matter what. They just yeah. assume that we can make yeah. Terminator That's 19 yeah. and guys will just accept it because there are guns yeah. that go off. There was a kid, I was no longer friends with him because of this conversation. Uh, I won't even use his <laughs> name because I don't even want to give him, I, I don't even want to give him the benefit. I built this platform. <laughs> Mr. Gall, that's his last name. I won't give him first name. Oh, <laughs> Steven. Um, so, where hold on, hold on. a friend was talking about Triple uh, X, and I was at the theater oh. Cinema Guzzo, mm. which was where I was raised in, Green, uh, in, in the South Shore of Greenfield Park, the next town over. And uh, totally, by the way, also connections with the mob. Like exactly what we would think with Cinema Guzzo. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they were going to see Triple X, and then I was seeing something, anything other than Triple X. Yeah. And I remember uh, a kid saying, what, my other friend Adam saying, well, is, it, is this what we're going to see? Is it any good? And the kid, go, uh, the kid goes, uh, yeah, are there boobs in it? I was like, oh, my God. And then the other kid goes, no, no, trust me, you're going to look at all these cool guns and blah, blah, I was like, well, no, no, no. What's this, what about the plot? What about the storyline? Yeah. And they just assume yeah. that all guys are like this 13-year-old Mr. Gall who <laughs> just go, are there boobs in it? Are there guns? Blah, 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 blah. And, and maybe that works for people who don't like have, I have access to a lot of really cool guns in real life. I don't need to watch Vin Diesel with horrible trigger discipline uh, and breasts on screen right. in which he could not be less interested, by the way. <laughs> it's just like, I want to watch, Uh-oh. if action is a part of it, yeah. then great. But I don't like it when they just think, ah, oh, let's just toss action in it and yeah. guys, will, guys will pay the, for, the, for the ticket. Yeah, I yeah, agree. If there's no mix, if there's no, you're not Mixing the action in with the story itself, it, yeah. it, it does definitely lose a lot. At that, at that point, it's what do they call it, like gun porn or action porn? I yeah. mean, right. it's just literally where you're Nothing literally just doing that. it for the reaction of the action explosions, itself, which, yeah. we, which yeah. takes away from it. So, yeah. I like some of the films that I really like, <clears throat> and some of my favorite films, which I know is kind of people say, Well, you don't like action films. A great film that I think is very, very underrated, and I don't know if I put this in my list of did we ever do a list of top five most underrated films? Maybe I think, not. I think we may have. We, we may have, have mentioned the movie. Let me know if we, we have. Yeah. You can comment and let me know. Obviously, The Edge is my favorite film. I think right. it's criminally underrated. But there's a film uh, with Kurt Russell called Breakdown. Did you ever yeah. see that film? Yeah, Where his wife? No, but I want to yes. see it. Oh, my gosh. It's so white, good. White button-down shirt. Yeah, his yeah. wife, their, their car breaks down, yeah. and they stop to make a phone call, and then his wife is gone. Yeah. So this that's is happened 90s the first Kurt Russell? Fi- yeah, 90s Kurt Russell thriller. Yes. And that's a genre of film that doesn't exist a whole lot peak. anymore. Those sort of, you know, that's sort of like basic instinct, fatal attraction. And, yeah. and Breakdown is very yeah. underrated, in my mm-hmm. opinion. It's more of a suspense thriller film, but those films yeah. kind of, they're not Marvel Universe, and they're not cheap indie crap that goes on Netflix that, yeah. you know, maybe at 1030 at night right. you go, all right. I guess. It's not, it's somewhere in between, <laughs> and that's, that sort of doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really kind of my favorite genre. My wife and I, like people often talk about how my wife wants to watch a rom-com. And I, no, I actually like romantic comedies. Some of my favorite films are romantic comedies. Yeah. But both my wife and I, our favorite films typically are that genre of sort of suspense yeah. thriller, which yeah. usually includes action. But it's, it's not just, kind of hey, but you, you, you. Like, listen, right. yeah. I have so many guns. Yeah. It's not that, like, I, yeah. I have an obscene amount of guns. So one, one movie that I, I think you liked uh, that might be considered an action movie was like Hell or High Water, relatively recent. Oh, yeah. Hell or High Water. That was, was fantastic. I loved, I loved that one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I would good. consider that an action movie that I really enjoyed that yeah. was almost, it wasn't big budget like that, but it also yeah. wasn't. That would be, yeah, you yeah. know what, that's probably why Almost I liked an it. Exception. It's one of the rare sort of exceptions. If yeah. you haven't seen Hell or High Water, and talk about, and this is one thing I'll say about Hell or High Water, uh, Ben Foster, everyone knows what ben a great Foster, actor so he is. And honestly, the, the the least impressive performance in there was Bridges because he's kind of he's kind of doing the parody of Jeff Bridges now. Sure. You know? yeah. yeah. And Chris Pine, for a guy who's sort of considered a, a, a pretty boy, and come on, <laughs> just those, I, I, get, I get lost in them. But... Um, <laughs> He's a very good actor, yeah. and he's yeah. on screen with people who would be typically seen as character actors, and people would sort of say, well, he's the eye candy to sell. He's sort of the leading man. 
He never gets upstaged by people, mm -hmm. and I don't think he gets enough credit for that. I think yeah. Chris Pine is a yeah. really good actor. It was yeah. excellent. It does yeah. seem yeah. like we have a lot of extremes with films now. Like, like you said, the Marvel Universe and then the, the other stuff kind of at the bottom end. I do miss those really good, like fun, easy to watch movies. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that kind of surprise you a little bit. It doesn't have to be like a you know a thriller that surprises me or something like that, but something right. that's better than I think it will be. Yeah. And usually it's like the overhyped, overbudgeted movie or or something that's really crappy. Like, is there a and maybe this is a good question? Like, is there a movie you guys have seen recently that like in the theaters that you were like? I oh, just well, that's recently saw Richard Jewell. Okay. Oh, uh, which was a Clint Eastwood. It was good. Yeah. It was good. And one thing I will say, Clint Eastwood always brings the best performances out of his actors, hmm. uh, but he's very reliant on sort of his director of photography because the, the light, there's some scenes where like, ooh, that lighting like it really looks amateurish or yeah. American uh, Sniper where they have the rubber baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? There are little things like that because <clears throat> Clint is just, you know, it's like, uh, he doesn't even say action. Yeah. Like, All right. Uh, when you feel like taking it. <laughs> like, oh, okay. yeah, take it. <laughs> um, so he's really focused on performances, which is yeah. great. And he always comes in under time, under budget. But he needs to be surrounded. And that's why you can see some inconsistency in sort of the technical yeah. acumen, mm -hmm. maybe, in some of his films. He needs yeah. to be surrounded with technical geniuses who also need someone like a Clint Eastwood. But Richard Jewell, there's some uh, periods and there's some uh, points in that film where um, Sam Rockwell and uh, I forgot the name of the guy. We just saw him in an old Key and Peele sketch the, yeah. from I, yeah. Tanya, the guy yeah. who plays yeah. Richard Jewell. Uh -huh. There's a scene at a diner where you just go, oh, all right. If they were to mail him the Academy Award here, it wouldn't be out of line. Yeah. Um, so it's very good. If you haven't yeah. seen it, I do recommend Richard Jewell. Um, is there mm -hmm. anything you guys have seen recently? You have to get going, but anything recently you recommend for people to see, especially during the Mug Club quarantine it right may have been. It may have been two years ago. So it's out now and obviously on every obviously platform. it was two years ago. It's it was out now. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, so I think it was uh, A Quiet Place. I haven't gone back to rewatch it, but in the theaters, that was very different. I love how he says like he's letting people, like he's giving them the inside lane. Like, I know. There's I like a little known no, guys, no, Everybody knew about that. I'm just saying. Quiet, it was a team. limited theatrical release to only uh, 9,400 yeah. <laughs> venues. Just a little movie. It's a called Avatar. Place. I don't know. Yeah. If you've seen I don't know if you've seen, seen that. Okay, so no. one action. No, I just, movie. I, it was good. I, I, I was very surprised by it in the movie. Like it was just great because it, <laughs> it brought me in in a way that I haven't. It was a good felt film. in a lot of. Films, Have you seen so. the, the really crappy version with Stanley Tucci uh, on no. Netflix? It's called something like the. I don't know what it's called. Someone, someone, please let me know. I forgot the title of it. But here's the thing: it's basically the same thing. Like if you talk, the yeah. monsters see you, but they're like little bats. No. Oh. And I'm, I was going, oh my gosh, think about, think about <laughs> ripping, ripping something off. Turned out that was actually adapted from the original novel, uh. and A Quiet Place was the one that ripped it off, but it uh. got to theaters more quickly. Well, good. But wow. this one, I mean, you think, okay, Stanley Tucci, he's almost never yeah. in something bad, yeah. unlike yeah. you know your folk hero Nicolas Cage. Um, <laughs> and this is so bad. <laughs> It might have been called like the place that is silent. It was yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, what were you going to say? So Good film. one one movie. It's older um, that I really enjoy the action in, even though some of the other parts of the movie are weak. Um, is Equilibrium with Christian Bale? Yeah, it hey. had really really like good action in it. Yeah, um, cool I think the philosophy. The theme, yeah, the themes themselves are really interesting. I don't think they execute on the story as well. Some of it yeah. is a little disjointed and a little bit's a little campy. Um, yeah, but sure. I thought the action in that was really good. And some of the stuff was science fiction in a way where you're like, ooh, yeah. I could. I could see that happening or some of those interesting things kind of uh, that was my go-to blockbuster pick I yeah, have that I was in, in my queue. I was like get that and you know what's funny like I've talked how terrible I am with names yeah yeah um, but I have just the way my brain works is I never forget a face I never forget a voice when I think of Equilibrium I think of and maybe someone can bring this up or look I think of that film was it Day Breakers Day Walkers with Ethan Hawke because of the cover oh, the, the cover yeah. looks yeah. the same They're just like the Tears and Event Horizon yes, yes. Yeah. Um, or like Broken Arrow and Face Off John Travolta so that's another we have to do a whole meat segment on that <laughs> Yeah, that's a phenomenon. It's that a phenomenon is, that no one else on has, has caught. But uh, that's what I, so that's what I think of equilibrium. But what is, what was equilibrium? I don't know anything uh, about it. So it's in the future. People take these. Uh, there's like a dictatorship that yeah. overtook the government. It's kind of oh. like like a Big Brother. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> oh. so, no, no, continue. I am mean, Come on, I'm just joking. It's I'm really good. Okay. It's good. <laughs> it's got Tay Diggs. He looks like such a sad wow. panda. Tay Diggs. Tay Diggs is in it. Uh, Tay Diggs is in it. He's a hundred percent terrible. So future dictator. So kind of a. Yeah, so you take you take medicine to make you happy, and then some people yeah. are like, "Wait a minute, I don't want to take the medicine like a, anymore." And one of the guys who's one of the elite guards uh, takes a different path. Yeah. Oh, is this the one where you put it in your eye, the medicine? Yes. You squeeze it like eye drops. Oh, yes. No, no, no. no you, it's like a. It's like an injection. So does yes, someone, but okay, no. here's, does some, is there a scene where someone comes home and it's like basically long before Alexa, but like a whole Alexa apartment telling you to reminding you to take your medication? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I'm thinking that, of something else. That <laughs> actually does happen, but I don't think it's an eyedropper, and I think I know what you're talking about, and it's a different movie. Oh, it's I think I'm thinking movie. of Black Carbon, that show. 
Uh, no, 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 no. Altered, uh, carbon. Altered, altered, altered carbon. Altered carbon. Altered carbon. See, I'm horrible yes. with names. Yeah. But how do I remember that? I have no <laughs> yeah. idea. Someone, if you go and watch it, you're like, oh, that's the exact scene. <laughs> yeah. And there's and just because I watched it and I thought, ooh, that, that there was something Are wrong. Are you talking with about upgrade? Ooh, upgrade is awesome. Upgrade, I upgrade watched is upgrade. Cool. The eye drops? No, this no, is a guy. There was an Alexa computer. kind of thing that tells him to yeah. take his medication and he stops taking it. But yeah, his whole body is he's a I recommend paraplegic. upgrade. Excellent. And he gets more a chip and makes his body like superhuman and it takes over his mind and stuff. It's actually really good. Is that good. the one with the guy who played the brother in the OC who kinda looks like Tom Hardy, but yes, isn't Tom he's Hardy? Tom, he's right. like low rent Tom Hardy. Yes. Yes. Low rent yes. Tom yes. Hardy. I did yes. not like that film. Okay. <laughs> I don't like that film. <laughs> Nor Lord of War. Dang it. I'm a, I'm, I'm, Lord. I'm, I'm a Lord. I hope you need to purchase some guns. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. This has been Ash Wednesday and uh, of course tomorrow we yeah. are going to be live. I don't remember who the guest oh. is but of course we still have our marquee guests on Thursday. And good morning yes. Mug Club. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning through the whole month of April. Quarantine is a promo code. Please renew if you are already a Mug Club member. We need you because YouTube don't pay nothing. Thank you so much. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow. We are-